Hello everyone and welcome to my IELTS showcase. Just before we start, I want to ask you one simple question. Do you know what IELTS are? Yes or no? Please type it in the chat. And while you're typing, I'm going to go over how this one is going to go. I'll basically be yapping for about an hour. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to actually showcase stuff in game itself. So I'll be showing you old runs by me and other great gamers. In the schedule it says that this is a GTA 3 showcase, but I lied as always. We are showcasing other games too, so if you're a fan of other games, make sure to stick around. And okay, I think we see a lot of yeses, which is pretty cool, because some people don't know what IELTS are, so let's start. Will this be on the test? Yes, this will. So, what is an IELTS? IELTS stands for individual level, and IELTS speedruns are speedruns of small parts of the game. IELTS are in a lot of games. So, for example, Sonic the Hedgehog. Every act you do is a separate IL, separate speedrun you can do. In GTAs, it's usually one mission is one IL speedrun, one side mission is one IL speedrun, and so on. There are some exceptions. Most of the GTA games have ILs. Uh, most of them have mission ILs, but unfortunately not all of them. Out of the great games that don't have mission ILs is, for example, GTA 4. But who knows, maybe after this showcase, people will change their mind and add ILs. So why are these small speedruns special? Like, are they even fun? Like, we have full game runs, right? They're surely better. And I'm gonna disagree with you. There's a big difference between these runs and full game runs. Oh yeah, once again, we, in the end, we'll have some time for questions. Unfortunately, I won't be able to answer them as I go. So make sure you prepare your question. In the end, we'll have like five to 10 minutes, hopefully, and I'll answer everything. So please bear with me. I won't be able to read the chat while I speak. Sorry for that. So yeah, what is the big difference? The big difference is you can do whatever you want before starting the run. We can go from as easy as preparing a fast car, a bike or a helicopter near the mission start to some crazy things I think you have never seen unless you followed the IL scene. So let's see how it goes. We'll start from the easy things though. So who am I? I'm Wolfel. This is me on the picture in my prison outfit. And I started speedrunning IELTS from one of my favorite GTA games, GTA Liberty Stories, but then I saw this. Once again, I love uh, presentations and animations in them, so bear with me. Joe said, Plaster Blast in 31 seconds or less, offering a bounty for this. Some people were interested, spoiler alert, nobody did anything apart from me, but it's okay. At that time, I already knew how to read the code, so I was like, okay, let's see how this mission works, maybe I can come up with something interesting. And the mission we are talking about is Plaster Blaster, where you have to damage the ambulance first, after you do it, the body cast falls out, and you need to destroy it, or kill the guy inside. And the easiest way, I mean, the fastest way, is to drive over it. You need to get lucky if you want to destroy it in just one go, but that's sort of random. So let's see if we can do anything here. And leaking all Discord conversations. Speaking of, but we will talk about later. Oh yeah, and that's how I got my prison outfit. Got called out by a moderator. Like, how did I teleport to Ray? Spoiler alert, I used cheats. So, did I beat the run? Did it work? Yes, as you can see, I beat it by 10 seconds. So what did I do? How did I manage to improve a short mission by 10 seconds? Let's see it in action. All right. So, first thing you'll notice, is that I have low health. Well, you can't even see my health right now. God damn it, pause on the health. Yeah, 3 HP. Also, you'll notice a little rampage timer right here. And that's a little stress that you see in full game runs too. If rampage ends while you're already on the mission, you're free to start other missions for some dupes and insta-passing. You can't do that in IELTS. However, what you can do is die or get busted during missions. And if you're on mission zero, then the mission is not going to fail. And this can be seen as a teleportation trick to get closer to the place you need to go. And that's exactly what we are using. Back then, Caster suggested this idea, so thanks to him. Let's see what happens, what happens next. So we start the mission, the timer fails. The timer for Zael starts as soon as you skip the first cutscene. So we blow up a car right near the ambulance. You see that I have a detonator in hand, let me scroll a little bit further, yeah, right here, detonator. So I put a rigged car 
which is a perfect way of damaging or killing somebody else remotely. I put it not so close to the embos because I don't want to destroy it, I just want to damage it enough so the body cast falls off as soon as we get close to the ambulance. And after that I kill Claude to quickly teleport to the hospital because the ambulance also spawns near the hospital. So let's see what's next. Yo, thank you Caster, thank you. As you can see, the damage bar is completely off the charts, and that's because we dealt more damage than needed. You'll see this car. Okay, but what is it doing here? Aren't cars supposed to disappear after you die? And yes, they are, unless they are marked. That's another trick that you can use for ILs and full full game runs too. There are many ways of marking vehicles in different games. I think all of the 3D GTAs have some tricks. They're different, as I said, but most of them are simple. So I just mark this car so I can use it even after I die. And you can also use marked cars to get more cars on the streets than you usually can, because usually the game keeps track of your last two vehicles that you've used. But here you can use like 10 cars if you need it. I only need one, so it's okay. As you can see, the ambus is right here. It's still driving because we didn't get close to it. So let's see how it goes. We just drive close to it, the body cast falls. As you can see, we get some speed. I didn't like the angle, but it was okay. And just like that, the mission was passed. And this run isn't perfect by any means. You can do a lot of stuff faster. I would say sub-20 is definitely possible. But back then, I was doing IELTS for fun. And this is what I want to... I want you to understand. You don't have to be doing IELTS for world records or for perfect times. You need to do them for fun. As long as you are having fun, it's a good IL. So I didn't care about perfect times, so I was happy with this run. But did I get the bounty? Of course not, that was a lie. If somebody else sees Joe somewhere, please add him. Pay up Joe, I'm still waiting. But moving on, after that I took a little break. Just a little break. But then I saw that. Kamix, another great Dota 2 player who occasionally speedruns GTA 3 posted this run both on speedrun.com and in Discord on 25th of April, as you can see. And he finished taking out the laundry, the classic 3 wins mission where you need to destroy 3 wins in 30 seconds. A very impressive time. But the thing that caught my attention was, of course, good luck beating that low. And what can be more fun than showing that grind monkey how it's really done? And at this point, we have everything to know how to beat that time, because we already know that we can mark vehicles, so we can have three vehicles on the map. We can rig them with bombs, so as soon as the mission starts, we can just blow up our vehicles and the mission should pass immediately. The reason nobody did it before me, I think, is because nobody knows where these vans spawn. For that, you have to look in the code, unfortunately, because GTA 3 doesn't have a big map. You only have the minimap, and on the minimap, you can't really see where they spawn. And after they spawn, they drive in a random direction. So, did it work? Let's see. 25th of April, remember this. So, this is, for example, one of the places where the land spawns, and this is my rigged land stalker right here. I just decided to show you one of the positions. It's near the fish. Well, it's in Chinatown. As you can see, it's quite far away from the Tony's mission, if you know the map. So this is why it was quite hard to determine the exact location if you cannot read the script or don't want to ping Paudina, for example. So did it work? Let's see it in action. We have three detonators for three cars. We just start the mission. The timer starts as soon as I skip this cutscene, so about now. And we just spam the button. Boom, I already don't have my detonators. We wait a little bit because unfortunately the cars don't imme ex explode immediately. The cars that we rigged, they explode and set the vents on fire, and it takes a few seconds for the vents to explode too. So this is how we got a very quick run. Oh, well, playing that again for some reason. And sure, thanks for that good luck, Mr. Comics. Now we have a five second time submitted on the same day. What can be more fun than showing that grind monkey how it's really done? All right. Next I thought, okay, can we implement this uh, remote explosion strategy in other missions? Are there any other missions where it's not done yet? And I decided to go for gun fishing. In gun fishing, you need to destroy this boat or kill the guy on it. And this boat is a ghost, as you can see, it spawns near the lighthouse, very far in water. And I wasn't scared of pushing my cars to this boat because I come from this special vehicles collecting community and we do that shit all the time 
we dance we've done some crazier stuff with pushing by water so i wasn't scared of that and the mission works the following way the first thing you need to do is to enter a police boat any police boat you can find don't have doesn't have to be the one that spawn is spawned by the mission but i was like okay so if i put my rigged cars here in water i can also push the boat the police boat close to the mission marker which is in stone and it's a race mission so you're kind of do the opposite thing cars in water boats on land well if it works it works i wasn't sure if it was gonna work or not so i decided to test it i used some cheat engine to teleport my car here i don't remember if i used cheat engine to push the boat maybe i pushed it myself but i tried this idea so you start the mission you enter the boat and you exit the boat and explode your car did it work unfortunately not this is the cutscene that starts after you damage the boat and unfortunately it was soft locked in this state and later we found out that the game is waiting for us to load portland collision because this boat is spawning all the way back in portland near the lighthouse and we are actually all the way back in Staunton and we're not coming to Portland. So the Portland collision is not going to load at all. And that's what I want to tell you. Not all of the ideas work. And that's okay. You have two options. First, you can, of course, give up. And second, you can think of workarounds. For example, what is our problem? Well, the problem is we are not in Portland. How can we get to Portland? Well, now we have two options. We once again can first enter a police boat and then go to Portland, or first go to Portland and enter the police boat. I decided to go for the latter. Let's see what I did. So, before I even start the video, you can see that I have a lot of HP. It says something like 27,000, but it's incorrect because HUD is not ready for big HP numbers. This game has a glitch that allows you to get a lot of HP, and by a lot I mean around 1 billion. And 1 billion HP is hell a lot. And the perfect thing about GTA 3 is you can actually save that HP in your save file. All other games, unfortunately, reset your health, probably to help player when you save, but GTA 3 doesn't, so you don't lose that extreme amount of health. But why would I need it? Let's see what I do. I start the mission, of course. And skip the cutscene. And now we're going to be doing the trick that you see a lot in full game runs called mega jumping as you can see i'm jumping on flat surfaces so mega jumping is a very fast way of moving on flat surfaces especially but it is extremely dangerous if you're jumping on flat surfaces or uphill you are losing tens on sometimes even hundreds of thousands of damage like one jump can cost you 150 thousand a hundred thousand hp easily but when you have a billion it's not a problem so you just jump 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 and it is a very fast way of moving especially in Staunton because Staunton is very flat and other runners did great ILs with that trick for example check out payday for Ray by top runners it looks awesome but let's go back to this one so i'm once again not even doing these jumps properly see i'm failing them i'm like running around jumping to the pier once again i have a prepared car right there and the boat in portland as soon as i jump here as you can see i'm entering portland well the load was quite short but now i'm on the boat i need to enter it exit it and use my detonator to blow up the boat the ghost let's see if it worked and yes we still get the cutscene but this time it progresses you can see my car under the boat right here he throws the grenade everything is fine and after this cutscene ends we are greeted with a mission pass screen i'm not gonna like wait for longer because you understand how it works obviously by the way i pinned the dock in this chat on twitch you can find all of these runs that i'm showing in that doc and if you are somehow watching it let's say on youtube or on twitch in what just join the gta speedrunning server ping me i'm zada691 or just pass like ask somewhere in general maybe and i'll link that doc to you too if you want to see it later so this this is how we completed gun fishing in 47 seconds we found the workaround and I was pretty happy with that, but I was like, hmm, is there a way to deal more damage? Our issue here is that we are damaging the boat, but we are not exploding it immediately, unfortunately. 
is it possible to do something else? I was like, okay, maybe if we put two cars there or three cars there, it's gonna deal more damage. But no, this is not the case. Unfortunately, for some reason, I think they explode on the same frame and for some reason the damage isn't summed up or something. But I was like, okay, there are other sources of explosive damage. And that is, of course, barrels, explosive barrels that we have right here. And I'll just start it going. It's sped up a lot because, as you can imagine, pushing barrels takes some time. So what I found out about barrels and other objects in general, like lampposts, dumpsters, fences, etc. If you move them and go away from them, they obviously respawn back to their initial location. However, if you block their spawn point with something, let's say your marked vehicle, then they won't be able to respawn and they'll stay in the place where you left them. And this is why I'm putting my car to the place where these barrels spawn and that I'm pushing these barrels. I remember that I had some issues with them losing collision midway, so I decided to go for four barrels. You don't need as many, you probably need just one. But I was just making sure that I have enough because this is a one-time deal. You do this mission and never again. So yeah, I'm pushing four barrels on foot, then I'm pushing them by water, as you can see with my reefer. Let me actually show it to you. So I could, of course, uh, use cheats once again to teleport the barrels to the boat. But you know what? I personally, this is not a rule, but I personally like to do something for the first time myself. I've never pushed barrels by water. I've pushed cars, so that's why I was comfortable with teleporting cars, but I've never pushed barrels. And I feel like if you do something once, then you kind of have this little check mark for yourself. Okay, I did that, so now I can just use it anytime I need. So yeah, that's how I pushed some barrels there, and now you understand that we have a car. We have a boat right here, once again, that we're about to enter. Am I starting the mission? Let's see. No, I'm deciding. I decided to check the boat just in case. Let me scroll a little bit. Oh yeah, one more thing. Sometimes uh, video playback basically crashes my presentation, so I'm sorry for that. I'll have to restart the whole thing if that happens, but hopefully not. So we enter the boat, we exit the boat, we blow up the barrel, and as you can see, that deals enough damage. The boat explodes immediately, and this is how we can skip that cutscene. So if we skip the cutscene, we skip the soft lock, and now we're back to the initial idea with another workaround. It worked, and we got a five or I think six second time, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So never give up on your ideas, even if they don't work. Just think about them a little bit more. Maybe come back to them in a month or two with new, fresh mind. This is okay if stuff doesn't work first try. And of course later I implemented this barrel idea with three wins and we actually have now a two second time there, which is probably unbeatable because in GTA 3 the cutscene that you skip, the initial cutscene, is 1.5 seconds and then there's usually 0.5 seconds delay before stuff spawns on the map. So I don't think you can go lower than two seconds in GTA 3. You can on other games though. Okay, let's see what else we have. Oh important topic. So I said that I was teleporting stuff, I was teleporting myself. So is it allowed to cheat in ILs or maybe even use external programs like cheat engine? And the answer is no. But actually, yes. So the very important, like the most important thing that you need to know, as you start your run, when you start the mission, after that point, you are not allowed to use any cheats, any external programs whatsoever. It has to be a real attempt. But before that, during the preparation steps, you are allowed to cheat and even use stuff like cheat engine, but only and only if you are doing things that are possible to do without cheats. So for example, pushing the car by water is possible, so I can teleport my car. Getting a tank after finishing the whole storyline in GTA 3 is possible, so you can spawn a tank with a cheat code. But you cannot spawn it in the first mission, because you cannot get a tank like during the first mission normally without cheats. I think Joshimus, I believe, found out that you can actually steal Hydra in San Andreas from Wounded level, and after that all of the GTA San Andreas IL speedrunners just started using the Hydra cheat, because it's much faster and it is very convenient, and it makes, well, it allows you to redo tedious setups and try many more times, otherwise you would probably never try crazy things. 
So yeah, don't use cheats during the run, but you are allowed to do cheats before the run. Be careful, for example, not to spawn something like a minigun if you're not supposed to have it yet. And there is no way to get it, of course. Better be safe than sorry and ask if something is possible or not. Okay, now I just want to show you another funny idea. So this is losing money. In this mission you need to enter any vehicle you want, and after that you need to kill a certain number of purple nines, a gang members. But you can override that objective with any objective from Rampage. And of course I went for the one where it asks me to blow up vehicles. Seven vehicles to be exact. And what I did here was I stacked ghost cars. So in this game you can make ghost cars, cars that go through objects and through each other. I stack them in one another. I actually put a barrel inside to increase the blasting power, I guess. And the vehicle I'm going to be entering, the one that is a, not a ghost car, I rigged it, so as soon as I enter it, it explodes. And this is how it looks. Once again, I have HP, but apparently I later found out that the mission actually passes faster than you die, so you don't even need HP if you don't want to. This is not even my world record attempt, but this one just looks funny. Just see it. Oh, we actually have some audio. Let me mute it, because in my videos I used to yap a lot, and we don't want to hear that here. So yeah, we start the mission. As you can see, we enter this car, that's the only not ghost car. All of these cars are ghost cars, there, are, there is seven of them, and there is a barrel somewhere here. And we are about to start the rampage with a replay, of course. Let's see that in action. I actually <laughs> fat finger and activate the replay twice, which is a time loss, but as I said, this is not my world record. I immediately exit, because this car is rigged, remember, and stuff just goes kaboom. And what's funny about that is <laughs> the <laughs> crazy sizes of vehicles that we sometimes get. So as you can see, my game crashed, and that's because we had, let me find it. Yeah, this uh, car, as you can see, it's bigger than the building. Well, you cannot see it right now, but just advance a bit. Yeah, it's right there. Still big, but not as big as it can get. Oh, now it's getting truly big. As you can see, it goes through the whole building. Oh, now it doesn't even fit on my screen anymore. Yeah, I thought this one was cool, because you never see these things in full game runs. And as I said, IELTS are all about these things that you never see in full game runs, because they are too stupid to set up, too long to set up, or too impractical to set up because your game crashes. But for IELTS, they are practical strats and they look cool, and that's why I love IELTS. Okay, so what's next? You remember this IL? Cool, I remember it too. Oh, evidence dash. Another IL with another cool trick. So I'm gonna show you the run itself. I'll remind you that in this mission you have a bobcat and you need to ram it six times to get six pieces of evidence. So you ram it, collect the evidence, ram it again, collect the other piece, and you do it six times, then you destroy your vehicle. But there is another way of finishing this mission. You can simply destroy uh, this bobcat, but not by throwing it in water, because that will actually fail the mission. Unfortunately, the car is proofed. It is bulletproof, it is fireproof, it is explosion proof, as far as I remember. So you cannot really destroy it that easy. Maybe also be damage proof, I don't remember that. It's been a while since I've collected special vehicles in this game. So it's not easy to destroy it. But let's see if I managed to do it and how. So we are starting the mission, we don't have anything, no health, no detonators, no nothing. Evidence dash. And mission is passed. Cool, but how? What did I do? Well, you know what? They call me a code monkey for a reason. And that's because I can actually show you what is going on after we start the mission, but by looking at the car itself. So after we start the mission, it looks... Oh, hold on. It looks like this. Except no, it doesn't look like this, because apart from this bobcat, we also have a tank right here. And as you know, well, now it's probably obvious. The bobcat starts driving, it hits the tank, and as you know, collisions with tank cause explosions. So the car explodes and mission is passed. Everyone is happy. Except no, it's not what is going on here, because first of all, for the explosion to happen, the tank itself needs to be moving. And I don't think this bobcat is even gonna hit this tank, because it's probably gonna turn before it. But even if it does, it's not gonna be powerful enough to move the tank with enough speed to cause the explosion. So what happens 
is actually quite the opposite. The tank starts driving by itself. Then it hits the bobcat and the bobcat explodes. So let's see that in action. Yeah, the game is synced right now. So let's see. <laughs> yep, and this is exactly how it looks in the game. As you can imagine, this slide, well, we put the most of our budget, all of our budget into this slide. But how? How are we moving the tank, right? Like, what the hell? We are not even in that tank. And this is another cool trick. In this game, in some other games too, like San Andreas, you can actually get clones. A lot of people come to these IL streams and ask, oh, what is this mod? Like, why do you have two players? But this is not a mod. There is a glitch that allows you to get another character. They're mostly useless, unfortunately. They cannot start missions, they cannot activate markers, they cannot enter or exit vehicles. However, they can move and they can shoot. They can shoot in a tank, but they can move in a tank. So right here we have a clone inside of that tank. So after I start the mission, I just start driving with that tank and boom, the car explodes and that's it. Which is a very interesting thing. If you ask me, not a lot of people know that you can do that. All right, moving on. We do, oh yeah, another RC vehicle type thing. This time in GTA Liberty Stories, going back to my roots. This is another interesting showcase. So in GTA 3, I was looking for RC vehicles, like getting an RC tank, for example, but I couldn't find the way to do it until way later. On PC, I think on mobile there are some tricks, but on PC I couldn't find it, that's why I used a clone. So it is a RC tank, but in quotations, right? But in Liberty Stories you can get an actual RC vehicle without any clones or nothing, and the process is extremely painful, it took me like an hour, I think. But let me just show you an action. We are going to be speedrunning an RC race, so that's a race with some little RC cars, and you have to collect all of the checkpoints before your opponents. But for some reason, I don't know why, there is another way of finishing and completing this mission. And that is, if you collect any checkpoint while all of your opponents are dead. And that is very strange. First of all, once again, these cars have some proofs. You cannot just shoot them. Second, you are actually locked in that event that you enter to start the mission. There are tricks and glitches to get out, but once again, you won't be able to deal much damage regardless. But for some reason, this is coded like that, and it is specifically coded like that. So I decided to find an RC vehicle. I managed to do it, and this is how the run looks. So let's get in the van, start the mission. And luckily for us, all of our opponents spawn in front of us all three of them, so it is very convenient to destroy them without destroying ourselves. And boom, one second race. It says, congratulations, you won, but you did not beat the lap record because, well, we did not finish <laughs> the lap. We just kind of got the first checkpoint. I bet you can do it with other RC races in this game, but I was happy with this one because this one is just a one second race, which is a real RC vehicle. And I would say it would be too selfish to showcase only my runs, while there are a lot of cool IL speedruns, speedrunners out there. So I reached out to some people and asked them to share their favorite ILs with me. And this one is by Computer Rage, it's Deal Steel. Once again, what we see is a Rampage Timer, so we are expecting a... Let's just start the video. We're expecting a Death Warp, I guess. As you can see, we finally have some sound. And that's because, unlike me, nobody else is yapping during their runs, which is cool for showcasing. We start the mission, we wait for the rampage to fail, we death warp. Once again, could be done much faster, but who cares, it's all about fun. And in this mission, we now need to meet some person. But let me show you one thing. Oh, coach is here. What are they here for? Well, I guess we'll get to that later. But once again, we're using a marked car that is prepared for us beforehand, and we're driving to the guy. We need to enter a yard lobo. Oh, another, another classic trick. Hold on. As you know, after you die, you lose your weapons. And how can you get weapons, like a lot of 
ammo for weapons. One of the ways that speedrunners do in, in, even in full game runs is from rampages. You'll see people starting the RPG rampage and when the timer is about to hit 0, 0, 0 and like disappear, they start spamming replays. And that is because if a rampage fails during a replay, then you get to keep all of the ammo from that rampage. But for that, people wait two minutes. Here, Computer Rage got the ammo immediately. How did he do it? And that's another trick that you also see in full game runs in GTA by City 100% speedrun. It's called a replay from future. So rampages work very simply. When you pick up the rampage, the game remembers the time you picked that rampage up and says, okay, in two minutes, if you're not done, I'm just gonna fail it for you. And that's it. So what you can do is you can load a save file where you have a lot of hours on that save file and record a replay there. It can be any replay, it doesn't have to be a replay with a rampage. Then you go back to your save file, the main save file, with less hours. You start the rampage and then you play this pre-recorded replay from the future. It is from the future because it has a lot more hours in it. And during the replay, the game is like, okay, wait a second. Not only did two minutes pass, a, f a couple of hours did, because replays also store your time in game time. So the game is like, oh wait, I forgot to fail the rampage, let's do it right away. And the rampage fails during the replay. And you get to keep your ammo. This is 100% consistent, unlike spamming replays in the end of replays, or in the end of rampages in full game runs. So this is even better. You don't have to wait two minutes and you get your ammo 100% guaranteed. A cool trick cool trick but yeah we're driving to get the yard lobo we of course could prepare it near the ambulance or hospital but it is slower than a bench so we prepare it here basically destroy all the doors remove them because well we don't want to open doors it's too slow go back to the hospital because this is where the deal happens get in the marker well we understand how it works kill everybody collect the briefcase that's just the normal objective on that mission you see that in all missions or in honda nothing new here so yeah and now the fun part starts what are these coaches for let me show you let me pause real quick apparently computer rage found the way to trap a random cop here so he can now bust at war because currently his goal is go back to the casino and casino is all the way back south it's very far away from the hospital but it is quite close to the police station, so if he can get busted quickly, he saves a lot of time. And how did he trap a cop? Like, wouldn't a random cop just disappear? And yes, if you death warp or just go away from a random cop, he disappears, of course. But computer is 100, no, 1000 IQ minded person. He used a marked cop car, lured a random cop inside of it. And since the car is marked, it doesn't disappear. And everyone who's in doesn't disappear either. So he managed to keep a random cop from the street even after the death warp, which is crazy. And he used all of these coaches as a jail. So this cop doesn't drive away. As you can see, he's driving back and forth, back and forth. And he also has this little taxi so he can enter and get busted quickly. That's literally 1000 IQ. He tried to get in the cop car, but the door was blocked and he got in the taxi. Now, it's a busted war. Once again, we're on mission zero, so the mission doesn't fail. Another parked car and we are very close to the casino. This is a really, really cool strat and I believe there should be more implementations of it. Maybe in other games too. But so far, this is the only run with that strat. And this is one of the favorite uh, computer rages runs. I would show you many more runs myself with many more different strats, but unfortunately we only have an hour and we are already behind the schedule, so we don't really have much time. Sorry for that. But yeah, let's move on. Now we are going back to Liberty City Stories. This is Painted Cat 7 to 6. And speedrunning Liberty City Stories styles is probably one of the best ways, ways of speedrunning, because if you are speedrunning on real hardware, you do the setup, you try the run, and if it goes wrong, you have to redo everything, because not everything can be saved in the save file. But in Liberty Stories, people usually use PSP emulator called PPSSPP, because it works very well with the game, and 
for IELTS, you can actually use save states. So you can do your preparation steps, everything you needed, make a save state, try the run, and if it goes wrong, no problem. You just go back to the IELTS and try, oh, to the save state and go again. And you can do it as many times as you want. This is literally the best way to do IELTS, in my opinion. Because if you do it on real hardware, on PSP, you don't even have cheat engine to teleport cards around. So it's extremely tough if you make a mistake during the run because some setups takes uh, take hours, but we'll talk about that later. So yeah, let's see what Painted Cat is doing. Once again, you can see low health, a detonator in hand, and the rampage timer. So we can already imagine that we're gonna be doing an admission zero death, potentially. We are going to be blowing up stuff. And we also have a pre-parked PCJ. Let's start the mission. And the mission is cash in Kazuki's chips. The one when where you need to do a lot of things. So the bike is actually not a regular bike. It's a so-called code bike. It has special handling and other properties. And you can get it from 9mm Mayhem side mission. As you can see, it turns very easily. And this is why people usually use this god bike for a lot of runs so we enter this area and we can already see a lot of cars prepared beforehand we enter the marker what's next the little cutscene we use our detonator so the cars that we just saw explode destroying and killing everybody we can see right there on the mini map we go back on the bike kill these guys by just drive buying it that's another bike that was prepared beforehand and it is also a god bike you can get as many as you want and once again this game also has marking in Vice city stories has and now we have a hunter what painted cat even prepared the hunter right here and that's true you can get a hunter and even mavericks in this game and even a police heli if you really try hard which is very cool and it's nice to see these rare and special unique vehicles that you're not supposed to get normally used in IELTS and this thing he's gonna do next he's gonna bail out in the marker I would never ever attempt that in a real run on real hardware because missing that is very easy and redoing the whole setup see it looks cool I would not do it now we just behead Kazuki because it's the fastest way and now we need to go back to Toshika which is not so far from here but for some reason Bandit Cat kills himself and that's very weird you know why it is weird because you actually respawned at the hospital, and we know that the casino is very far from the hospital, so why did he do it? Like, what? It's also a very long loading screen, so what is going on? So now he has drive all the way back to Tashika's place, and I don't understand why would he do it, like, it's so much closer from the casino. But let's skip this long drive, because we want to save some time, and you'll see an interesting thing. As we get to the place where Tashika's missions were, you'll notice that there is no finish marker. The last marker of the mission isn't present, meaning that the mission is no longer active. So did we actually fail the mission? And that can happen in Liberty Seed Stories. In Liberty Seed Stories, sometimes if you die even on mission zero, some missions fail because the game is coded like that. But another thing you'll notice, there is no mission start marker right there, which means that yes, the mission is finished, but we not failed it. We didn't fail it. We actually passed it. And that's another crazy thing that I found about this game. First of all, I found it by accident, but for this specific mission, I find it found it in purpose. Some missions, for some reason, progress if you just die. This game is coded like that. Seriously. Thank you leads very much. In this particular mission, only the last part can be skipped like that which is not a lot, but for example, shop till you stop, the mission where you need to go with Maria to some shops and steal some things from them, or rather wait for Maria to steal stuff from shops and then go back. This whole mission can be skipped by just dying and dying over and over again. Every single part of that mission can be skipped like that. So yeah, I, uh, Liberty City IELTS are also crazy. And I believe there are some setups for clones, but nobody used them yet. Also not sure if these setups work on real hardware, which is another thing you need to consider. You are not allowed to do emulator-specific glitches on real hardware. Well, not on real hardware, in real runs, because only real hardware 
stuff that works is allowed. But that goes for every category, not only IELTS. All right, moving forward. No, it's not really a list pass. List pass is a different thing, but also exists in this game. Now we go to Vice City. And of course, I contacted Ramazan. Ramazan is a great runner. All of the runners I contacted are great runners. Most of them do full game runs too. Not only Ramazan does. But Ramazan likes IELTS too. And I asked, what is your favorite mission in GTA Vice City? And everybody will answer, of course, it has to be Demolition Man. The only mission we all love. Because we have kind memories of that mission from our childhood. Every single one of us does, I'm sure of that. So let's actually see this one in action. Okay, let me start it. So, he starts the mission, we can already see a pre-parked bike, probably to get close to the van that we need to enter. That's normal stuff, that's easy thing you can do. Start the mission, get on the bike. Oh, it's a bit too loud, let me make it a bit quieter on my end. We enter the van, and now we have to basically drop four bombs, as you know, using this little helicopter with perfect handling. But the building looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Almost looks like it's already destroyed. Wait, what the heck? He just went through the wall. And apparently in GTA Vice City there is a trick to disable collision for this building, so you can just fly straight to the barrels and put bombs there. Which is pretty cool if you ask me. You don't have to fly around, it's very fast, and it is very easy because there is no one else to catch you. So, how is it done? What I like about uh, IELTS submissions, most people, when they use crazy things like that, and I do that too, they also include setups in their submissions. It can be in the same video, it can be a separate video, but it is very nice, especially for a moderator to exactly know what is going on, because, trust me, if I were a GTA Vice City moderator and I saw this run, I was like, what? I would be like, what the heck, how does he do it? Like, I would need to contact him and ask how did he disable the collision. Oh, nice jump, by the way. But since he provided a setup video, we can actually see what is going on. Well, I don't think we need to watch the whole video. You understand what you need to do here. By the way, always go for the furthest barrel last, because it's an obvious thing. You don't have to go back. So you go to the furthest point once instead of going twice if you go there as your first destination. A lot of people for some reason fail to realize that. Shout out to Nick007J for making fun of these people. But yeah, how do you disable collision? So here's his comparison video. Well, not comparison, setup video. Apparently, if you die during the last cutscene, then the mission fails, but the building stays destroyed. And how can you die during the last cutscene? First of all, you're in the van, and second, you are in the cutscene, you can't even move. So, let's see that in action. First thing he said, you have to fly very close to the floor level, ground level, because otherwise the bomb will automatically drop, and that is because he's holding left mouse button, the attack key. Why is he holding that? We'll see in a moment. So yeah, finally he plants the final bomb, Let's see that. Oh, another loud explosion. And a lot of things are going on right here. Let me scroll a bit further. Back, we'll see this weapon menu. So apparently, he did a trick where he managed to keep the menu from ammunition. That is a very powerful trick in GTA Vice City. A lot of IELTS use that trick. First of all, it of course allows you to buy weapons from that specific store that you entered. For, some, for example, you can buy armor if you need to. But if you scroll left or right, you will be teleported to that store. So that's also a teleportation trick. And in order to not teleport while you're flying your helicopter, you have to hold the, I think it's the buy key, buy weapon key. So that's why he's holding it all the way. But in the cutscene, he lets go of that key, he changes to a different weapon, as you can see, teleports to the shop. That's a hardware shop. It doesn't matter which shop you use. You are getting teleported anyway. Now he is using a replay, a clothes replay, another common thing, I think, to get controls. And now we can no longer see him. But he is killing himself with Molotov. We can hear it. Barely, but we are able to. 
mission is failed, so he gets a chance to redo it, but the building, the building stays broken. And we saw everything that happened later. Okay, moving on. We're actually pretty good on time, I think. We'll have like 10 minutes for questions, which is perfect. Going to GTA San Andreas. This is run by Hans. I'm sorry if I pronounced uh, their name wrong, but it is a very cool run in my opinion. Let's see that in action. The mission that we are speedrunning here is NOE. A simple mission, if you think about it, but let's see what is going on. So he starts the mission, he gets in the plane, and now he needs to fly to the marker, but well, the whole collision disappears. So in the previous video we saw the building collision disappear, here everything loses collision, well almost everything. You can fly through almost everything you want, which makes this mission so casual, you basically fly in a straight line. But there are a few complications. Well, how to get to this state is known already, and once again there is a video, a separate video that shows the whole setup process, so I'm not going to be showing that you, to you because it's quite long. But there are some complications, because if there is no collision, how are you supposed to start the mission first? And there are some clever tricks. First, he uses taxi driver to spawn some pedestrians, because mission objects, so let it be vehicles or pedestrians, mission objects load collision around them. So he uses taxi driver to load collision near his garage. He gets his hunter out of that garage, flies to the airstrip. He then starts vigilante, hoping to get a criminal close enough to the mission marker, so the area near the mission marker is loaded. When that happens, he finally starts the mission, gets in the plane. For some reason, well, the plane is obviously a mission vehicle because it is spawned by the mission, so there is a collision around it. Somehow the collision disappears as soon as he enters the plane, not sure why. And now he flies to this marker and then he's gonna fly back. But there is one more question. How is he gonna land on the airstrip if there is no collision? And I guess let me scroll right here real quick, just to show you another brilliant thing. Another brilliant idea. He starts flying high enough, so his visibility bar fills up fully. And what that does, it spawns a mission Hydra that is after him. Right there, you can see it on the map, right here, see? And this Hydra is close enough to the airstrip, so the airstrip collision is now loaded. He also prepared some marked cars there just to make his landing way quicker and the cars won't fall unless you touch them even if there is no collision underneath them so it's okay to prepare them beforehand and yep there they are there's the hydra as soon he as, he, as soon as he stops the mission ends the hydra disappears because it's no longer needed and the collision goes away ingenious strat apparently the trick was known long 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 time ago on some ancient forums I think probably somewhere in 1986, somewhere on the Russian forum maybe. And Rance was just looking for a mission to use that trick, and that's a perfect example if you ask me. We have one more run though. This time it is a run by XRL, another great IL speedrunner in GTA San Andreas. And the mission is, of course, Vertical Bird. Let's see this one in action. First of all, we'll notice that he is already on the mission, and this is still the preparation step. He wants to see where these boats spawn, because he wants to put his marked plane right here, so he can later destroy it remotely and destroy these two boats remotely. We can already see CJ up there on the wing, but what you'll notice in a second, it's not Carl, it's actually his brother, because the real, oh, sorry, <laughs> spoiler alert, that's actually his brother, Barrow, because Carl is right here beheaded. Well, beheading doesn't have anything to do with the run, it's just a funny gimmick you can do in Sandra's by using your clone. But what he does here is he puts his marked plane right there, he makes Barrel sit so he doesn't move when he moves Carl, and that's basically the first part of preparation. Yes, it's Barrel and Carl. No, I don't think anybody used Arl yet. Probably because to get barrel you actually need to do go to, and I'm not sure you can do go to twice without major consequences. 
Okay, let's see what's next. So now we know we can destroy these two boats, but what about the rest? We go to the mission marker, which we cannot even see. We destroy our Hydra to fail the mission right there. Some FPS shenanigans that I don't understand, but probably they save some frames, I don't know. So yeah, we start the mission. We skip the cutscene and this run is going on. What we'll see here is that he prepared a monster truck. A hacking monster truck right here. So you know what's gonna happen right now. He's about to do monster truck glitch in a real run. He finds the perfect vehicle he needs, he waits for the perfect amount of time, he enters the car and he's getting launched in the perfect direction. As you can see he's already on the ship and I don't think you even noticed what happened. So let's see it one more time, but this time I'll pause the video. So you know monster truck glitch, it's a crazy glitch and it is extremely random. First of all he needs this specific car, which is already a huge RNG moment. Then he needs to wait for a very specific amount of time. And then he needs to get the right launch. The launch he wants to get is towards the ship that he needs to enter, but he wants to get launched underneath the map, so when he falls out of the map, out of bounds, the game responds him to the closest pad node which happens to be on that ship and this is how he enters it so one more time don't blink let's see it in action boom as that as that's not the only mission when where he uses monster track glitch crazy stuff it must have took days to perform right here he just runs it's not over yet there are more tricks in this one and another trick is coming right here so as you probably know right outside of that doorway there is a hydra and as soon as you run through this doorway, this Hydra takes off and you cannot use it. However, apparently there is, there is an invisible trigger right here. And if you jump over it, the Hydra stays and you can just steal it. Insane. Not a lot of people know about it. I didn't know about it until Xral told me. Now we're entering the normal any percent strat where we destroy everyone by manipulating them to fly into the bridge. That's pretty okay. Nothing crazy here. And yeah, we are bleeding because we apparently don't have head. And now we know that we have to destroy four ships. Two are gonna be destroyed by a brother barrel who is probably throwing some satchels or other explosives, I don't know. And the other two are gonna be destroyed by us. So see, this blip is about to disappear on the left. Boom. And we are destroying these two ships ourselves. Now we need to land. There's gonna be one more trick. Caesar alert. Close your eyes if you have problems. Because we're gonna be pause buffering right here. We are skipping Tarino's lines. Unfortunately, he didn't really need to do that because landing was fa wasn't fast enough. But, well, it is what it is. Okay, and that was the last run that I wanted to show you. So now you can finally ask your questions. But I'm gonna be showing you some more things in the meantime. As I said, IELTS are for everyone, so feel free to do IELTS. Once again, do them for fun, don't go for world records only. Use the strats that you want to use, easy strats, hard strats. If you want some help with teleportation cheat, in cheat engine, ask on the Discord server and you will get some help there. And in order to may get more people into these IELTS, we created some events during different months. Of course, you can run IELTS anytime you want, and not only in GTA. These events are for any game you want. The first one and the main one is Destroy Individual Levels December Official. In short, DILDO. That's the correct pronunciation. You do crazy tricks here. Sometimes you don't have enough time to finish your run, so you go into just another IL, Jail in short, and that is in January. Perfect time to finish something that you didn't manage to finish in December. Then, of course, we have Upper IL, People all the way back in the day decided to put IELTS in the name of the month because they knew how big this thing is gonna be. And April is surrounded by two events, March or May individual levels, fast or MILF in short, and everybody loves MILFs, of course. We even have an emote right there, which you can use. It's a 7TV emote. We also have emotes for April, two of them. So yeah, feel free to join. We will be stocked to see more runners. Please do. Yeah, sorry, no April F financial compensation. Not seeing any questions though right now. So I hope that everything was easy to understand then. I also want to give some shout outs to people who actually participated to these in these events in one way or another. Most of them are runners and some of them we saw today. Bus Bus23 cool IL runner. He is not afraid of using slow strats that just look cool. 
huge shutouts found a new trick well yeah a new teleportation trick in gta3 found a way to implement a new uh, jumping through walls trick using grenades that was found by computer rage check him out redoptor vice city great runner mhmd another great vice city runner kadiri pikuda and nick chinatown wars warriors chinatown wars i also are a different thing they are so crazy you don't see crazy tricks you see crazy execution in there and it's very easy to get into chinatown wars i else because you basically have mission replays and can retry retry right however many times you want they're also in the middle of rebranding i think a little bit so Keep an eye out for Chinatown War Sales. Danza, great Turismo run. Gudron did a few Tilad races, also considers, ch well, not chapters, parts of GTA V segments as ILs. Spook didn't really do any ILs himself, but promoted the events as hard as he could. Kamix, he is not afraid to submit his RTA runs. You don't have to be doing crazy things. You can just take your gold from your full game run, and if you think it's good, submit it. Best RTA times also matter. It's not only about the crazy tricks you can get and do before starting missions. Everyone, I forgot, sorry for that, but I appreciate you too. Can we have more insane IELTS showcased? Encore? I'm sorry, we're already behind on time, and we have like six minutes left as far as I'm concerned. Well, five now. Sorry. No, MH, your IL was nice. Oh, sorry, Sventer, of course. Sventer also tried an IL, Bob the base, but unfortunately he did not finish. Hopefully he's gonna finish another run during another event. Or maybe outside of event, because cool. Shout out to Bill for inventing PowerPoint. Real. Yeah, Turismo was pretty clean. That's a race in GTA 3 and it was really, really clean. You forgot Kevin? Yeah, probably. Probably. So sorry for that. Once again, I cannot... Well see everyone who's doing else so yeah to support events just put their names in your stream titles or maybe your speedrun.com submissions or both feel free and even though i showed you a lot of crazy stuff what if i tell you i haven't shown you the craziest il across all of the gts yet at least in my opinion everything you see on this thumbnail is actually used we have Carl, oh carl oh my god claude blood and a lot three brothers we have an rc car in that il Oh, thank you for the ping, by the way. <laughs> oh my god, stop pinging me, please. And we also... Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> That's a classic, classic... Oh, it's Svender, of course it's Svender. Do not disturb. All right, we even have grenades in that run. Unfortunately, I cannot show you this run because the whole explanation took me 30 minutes. It's up there on YouTube. You can find the link in the doc that is pinned in the chat right now. It also has crazy tricks akin to Monster Truck Leech. Crazy random tricks, I mean, but in GTA 3. If you liked what you saw today, feel free to check it out. It's available both in Russian and English, and it's crazy good. Trust me. Trust me. Self-promotion? No, not yet. Because now it's time for self-promotion. Shameless plug time. I asked if it's okay, and they said yes, but I asked in 2022 and didn't bother to ask this year, so I hope it's still alright. So, apart from doing full game runs or IL runs... Oh, oh my god, where is it? Oh my god, it's broken. Holy shit. Hold on. So yeah, <laughs> let me fix it real quick. Apart from doing the runs, uh, I also have a YouTube series. Of course, animation doesn't work when it needs to do work. Uh, let's see if it works now. Where I explain how tricks and glitches work. It still doesn't work. Whatever. I'll just hope you trust me. Because, yeah, I explain how tricks and glitches work. If you want to know, I already have 16 episodes, both available in English and in Russian too. So feel free to check them out. Let me see if I can quickly fix it because we have just about enough time. Three minutes. I'm so sorry. I didn't know it would be broken because it wasn't broken before before I checked it. Uh, classic, classic. But I'm so sorry for that. Hold on. One last try, one last try. Uh, animation. Is it going to work? Well, let's, let's just see if it works. I don't know, man. But you, what you'll see on this, <laughs> denied, I guess, self-promotion denied. What you'll see on this s screen is just some of my... Oh, there it goes. Some of my videos and some of the topics you can see on that video. You can choose any video you want. 
Once again, link is in the doc if you want to check it out. You can suggest your own topics. Currently, I'm working on a video about AGS, which is a glitch that allows you to complete GTA San Andreas and GTA Liberty Stories in 14 minutes, unlock debug menu in GTA Liberty Stories, and do many cool things. Suggest your topics, watch topics that you think are interesting, vote for the next topic. I'll see you there, hopefully, if you're interested in set style of videos. We are looking into the game code, but don't worry. Okay, it stopped, whatever. You don't need any prior programming knowledge or any knowledge at all. I use analogies, I use visualization, so hopefully anybody can understand what I'm saying and showing. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments on YouTube. And one last thing before I go, one minute left, just enough time. If you want to do IELTS, or if you're already doing IELTS right now, and your goal is to become the IL King, aka the person who has the most world records in the specified game, the games that they run, then you are doing it wrong. A lot of people call me an IL King, but I don't agree with them. I already started losing some of my records to Computer Rage. And how one of the famous philosophers long time ago said, Why be a king? Think not. Why be a king? 